have with their legal warriors hunting and fishing in Washington State. What are 10 laws that I think it's important that you know about if you hunt or fish in Washington State? So much is illegal. So if you hunt or fish or just interested in the laws in the state, stay tuned because this is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years, and I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Jumping right into it. Hunting and fishing laws. There's so many of them, and not a lot of firms, uh, you know, cover hunting and fishing as part of their practice. And my firm does, and a client of mine asked me to put out a video covering some of the laws. So I'm going to just cover 10 laws that exist in Washington State that it would be important that anyone who hunts or fish know about. And I'm not going to cover them in detail because that'd probably be an hour-long video, um, but I'm going to go through the basics and uh, some of the things I'll cover you can find in other videos on my website. So let me just jump right into it. Um, number one, have fishing, you know, recreational fishing in the first degree, unlawful recreational fishing in the first degree. That's one of the most common a serious charges that we see in my office. And there's a whole long list about what is illegal. And I'm gonna make sure that we link in the description to each of these statutes. But for the most part, think about unlawful recreational fishing in the first degree is catching two or more times the catch limit of fish or shellfish. So let's say the catch limit of a fish was four of a certain type and you had nine. Well, that's double or more of the legal limit and you would be charged with unlawful recreational fishing in the first degree, a gross misdemeanor crime with a maximum penalty of 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. Additionally, if a certain types of fish, some, some white sturgeon, some, some other types of fish die as part of this, there's actually a wildlife penalty assessment that could be assessed as well. And if you don't pay that, you get your, your privilege to hunt or fish suspended, okay? Um, also, if you like gaffing um, or snagging um, a, a salmon or something like that, that can be unlawful recreational fishing in the first degree. There's a whole lot of ways, but that's one of the most common uh, charges that we see that often does get charged and you have to go to court. Um, number two, unlawful recreational fishing in the second degree. So that means that, hey, you have too many of a certain uh, fish or shellfish, but less than two times the limit. Okay, if you happen to catch one and the limit zero, that's probably recreational fishing first degree. But if the limit was, uh, you know, six of something and you have nine, that's unlawful recreational fishing in the second degree. A simple misdemeanor, 90 days in jail and a thousand dollar fine max. Okay, and overall, let's also keep in mind that if you get three hunting, recreational hunting or fishing violations in most categories, so any three, including infractions, in a 10-year period, you're going to lose your right to hunt or fish for a period of time. So um, if you're fishing and you have too many of a species or the wrong species, or also if you weren't licensed and you happen to catch a species without being licensed, those will be crimes in one of those two areas. Now, if I were to jump into another area that not a lot of people think about um, that I've seen many times in my office, the third one I'd like to cover is uh, basically spotlighting big game. Spotlighting big game. What does that mean, Lance? Well, basically, if you use artificial light to hunt big game while you're in the possession or control of something that could uh, you know, shoot them, crossbow, gun, bow and arrow, you know, shotgun, something like that, then that's illegal. And that's a very serious charge in Washington State. It's a gross misdemeanor charge. Also night vision goggles, that would apply. And if you're convicted of a first offense in that area, that's, that will still uh, not only give you a, a gross misdemeanor crime, but will also suspend your privilege to hunt for a period of two years. And there's some situations with a prior offense within a certain amount of time, things like that, that it could be turned into a felony and you'll lose your right to hunt for 10 years. So spotlighting big game is where we see that would be, um, where I've seen it is Fish and Wildlife sets up a decoy, like a decoy 
a deer or something on the side of the road and you someone dries up before it's the official hunting time while it's still dark and they see that perfect trophy uh, sitting there and now it's animatronic and they move it around and your headlights happen to be on because it's dark out the headlights help you see you take a shot at it boom you get charged with a bunch of charges at that point because you're shooting too soon also but spotlighting big game and then we've got big big troubles because if we're convicted of that not only can we go to jail we're going to lose our right to hunt moving on to number four the fourth one i want to cover is unlawful hunting of big game so i just did spotlighting of big game now we're talking unlawful hunting of big game and in that prior example i think the person shooting the decoy would also get charged with unlawful hunting of big game. So unlawful hunting of, of big game in the second degree is a gross misdemeanor, one year in jail max. And think about that. There's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one is to hunt for big game or possess big game without having in your possession all the licenses necessary or having acquired all the licensing licenses necessary. That's one way to do it. Um, the second way, you can be totally properly licensed, but you violate any department rule about area, closed seasons, um, uh, you know, all types of different things and in, in that there's a long list. But basically, uh, if you are uh, possessing or hunting for a big game without a license, you're going to get charged. Or if you're hunting for big game with a license, but you violate some other type of rule, almost all of them are going to get you charged with a gross misdemeanor offense. And that's one year in jail max, $5,000 fine max. And if you're convicted of it, you're also going to lose your right to hunt for two years. And so often we see people that call in their own violation. Hey, I, I ended up in the wrong area or I shot the wrong species or my bullet went through two uh, of, of an otherwise legal am, animal. The officers show up, they charge you with a gross misdemeanor, they forfeit your weapon. Now, if you get convicted, you're going to lose your right to hunt. So also there's unlawful hunting in a big game in the first degree. We see that less often. Um, that typically is you have a prior offense within five years or three or more big game animals were killed in a 24 hour period, a certain course of of action and I think it's a 24-hour period if you get convicted of that one that's a felony offense five years in jail max and you could lose your right to hunt for 10 years and so what is big game well we're gonna link also in the uh, uh, description to what big game is but think about it as um, you know larger animals right uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, the deer out there um, a lot of uh, the uh, you know, wild goats, things like that, are going to count as big game. Moving on to the fifth law I think it's important you know about, that's unlawful hunting of wild animals. So wild animals are wild animals not classified as big game. And there's also two different levels of unlawful of hunting wild animals. First degree and second degree. Most of the violations hopefully will be second degree. So how do we run afoul of this particular statute? Well, if we are hunting for wild animals not classified as big game, and we never got the license that we needed to get, whether or not we've taken a wild animal, that makes us guilty of unlawful hunting of wild animals in the second degree. That's a simple misdemeanor, 90 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. We can also run into a problem if we have bought our license, but we've taken a wild animal and we're not possessing the license at the time. If we've taken a wild animal and we don't have a license on us, that makes us guilty also of second degree unlawful hunting of wild, anim wild animals. Additionally, you might have your license and you might also have your license on you, but you violate some other rule of the department in involving the area, the season, the bag or the possession limit, there's a long list. But in that case, uh, in most cases, it's a, also a second degree violation, unlawful hunting of wild animals, second degree, unless you have two or more times the bag or possession limit, then that bumps it up to that gross misdemeanor. As you can see in many of these laws, having twice the limit makes it worse than having just over the limit. So if you have twice the limit or more of the wild animal and you've done everything else right, then you're going to be guilty of a gross misdemeanor, $5,000 fine, 
one year in jail. The good news is there's no automatic suspension of hunting privileges in this case. There's only the three and 10 years thing, okay? So in that case, while it's very serious, it doesn't result in automatic suspension of hunting licenses like it would for unlawful hunting of big game. So number six is unlawful hunting of wild birds. We've had unlawful hunting of big game, awful, unlawful hunting of wild animals, and now we have unlawful hunting of wild birds. And those rules are pretty similar to the unlawful hunting of wild animals. There are first degree violations and second degree violations. As you might guess, second degree is a simple misdemeanor, 90 days in jail. Uh, a first degree is a gross misdemeanor, and the rules are pretty similar. How can we get charged with this? Well, we're hunting for wild birds and we have not obtained the license or the stamps necessary, right? Certain types of waterfowl require an extra stamp, not just the license to be able to hunt for because there's, you know, a limited, uh, uh, you know, s amount of that bird out there. So if we're hunting and whether or not we've taken any type of animal, if we haven't bought the proper license and stamp, that's a simple misdemeanor. Um, if we have bought the proper license, we have the proper stamp, we're hunting and um, we take a wild bird, but we don't have it in our possession, that's also a simple misdemeanor, second degree. Or if we have it in our possession, we've done everything right, we have it in our possession, possession but we violate, again, one of those other rules. You know, the timing, the area, the bag, or the possession limit. That all will be uh, unlawful uh, hunting of wild birds in the second degree, unless we have two or more times the bag or possession limit. That's gonna bump it up to first degree again, where we're gonna have a gross misdemeanor, $5,000 fine, one year in jail maximum. There's one extra little wrinkle, and I've seen this in my office before. If part of our charges are a violation of this for using, uh, for failing to use non-toxic shot, shot, right? We forgot to use non-toxic shot while hunting for these wild birds. That gives us an extra wildlife penalty assessment. There's a $1,000 extra assessment that we're gonna have to pay the court if we get convicted of that. And so anyone who hunts wild birds knows there's a lot of <laughs> lots of rules about, you know, the type of shot we can use, how, how many shells and stuff like that um, that we can have. But um, as far as extra special rules, extra thousand dollars on top of any fines if we use non-toxic shot and we get convicted. Again, there's no automatic suspensions here for this type of violation. It's only the three and 10 year suspension that you have to worry about. Moving on to the next law I want to cover, not a lot of people know about this, is number seven. Unlawful practices, the baiting of black bear. And for almost all purposes, it's illegal to use bait to attract a bear to hunt the bear, in this case, black bear. There's a specific statute which listed in the comments that says that uh, you can't put down any substance, any type of thing to bring bear to an area where the intent is for somebody to hunt them. And let me tell you, that is looked at very, very seriously in the state. It's not a felony offense, but it's a serious gross misdemeanor offense, and there's a massive suspension of one's hunting license. On a first conviction, that's a five-year suspension of a license. On a second conviction, it's lifetime suspension of ability to hunt. And, um, you know, if you don't know about that, you might think, oh, well, you know, I, I'm legally allowed to hunt for bear. I've, I have all, everything that I need to do that legally. I'm going to just throw out some corn cobs or do something like that or put some grain down or some something that attract them. You know, Fish and Wildlife will watch for that and they will treat that so seriously. We've handled those cases in my firm and I'd say that's one of the most serious hunting and, and fishing uh, violations that we see out there and how it's handled by the government. So now I think I've covered seven crimes. I think for eight, nine, and ten I want to cover the most common infractions that we see. What's the difference between an infraction and a crime? Well, a crime, you can you got to go to court and you can go to jail. An infraction, you can just pay a fine, like in a speeding ticket or something, in, in, like in a driving analogy, and you don't have to go to court. So number eight uh, that uh, I want to cover is basically uh, barbed hooks. Believe it or not, um, oftentimes the department rule prohibits the use of barbed hooks for uh, fishing 
and you know the fish and wildlife guys come by and they check your tackle and you've, you haven't done anything else wrong besides you didn't realize you had a barbed hook and you're going to get a ticket for that and if you get a ticket for something like that you can't just ignore the ticket you've got to either pay it typically within 15 days or turn it into the court for a contested hearing because you want to fight about it and if you've already got two prior fish and wildlife violations in the past 10 years you don't want to just pay it because that's going to trigger a suspension of your privileges eventually right it might take a while for them to catch up to it but you will get something in the mail uh, number nine would be failure to immediately record a catch on a catch record card for certain types of fishing and shell shell fishing we have to record our catch and i've seen all types of nightmares in this situation right we want to be reasonable and think, well, well, you know, we, we, caught, we caught the species and, uh, well, I want to do a few things first. I'll record it when I record it, but then here comes fish and wildlife, right, up to you. And if, if, if it's not already recorded or they see you start to record it, they're going to ticket you, right? They do it, at least for the cases I see, they do it every time. Um, I've also seen other cases where um, I've seen a catch record card where the ink used was washed off with water. I watched it happen right in my office. And so you got to make sure that whatever you're using to mark your catch, that it's not going to be some type of uh, ink or, or something that is so water soluble that it disappears if it gets wet because face it, uh, we get things wet. And number 10 is failure to turn in your catch record card. You know, they can figure that out. Right, they know through the wild system, you know, uh, whether or not something's been turned in. It's it's not the easiest thing, but I have seen it happen. And so, if you have a catch record card, the reason why we, we keep the catch record is so they can keep track, right, of what's going on, and that's good for all of us. So make sure you turn it in again. Um, it's a infraction. If you get served with the infraction, you need to request a hearing with the court, or you can just pay it. But again, watch out for the three and ten year thing because that can be a big problem for you. So I've covered 10 of some common hunting and fishing violations, some common and some I thought you just would want to know about because they're not so well known. There's hundreds and hundreds more I could go over. And um, you know, if you hunt or fish, be careful. And if you found this video useful, please like and please subscribe. And if you run into a hunting or fishing violation, please give us a call. We have a pretty wide jurisdiction we, we go over. Well, most of the places we'll go, we know how each county handles these type of things. Some care more about the money, some care more about convictions, some don't care much at all, right? So if you run into that situation, give us a ring. We'll listen to what happened. We'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you.